the first impression I got was the car looks so big and also all the aerodynamic details was really impressive. Actually, I like the car right uh, behind me, the elephant foot, where it looks a bit like a DTM or an LMP car. And uh, yeah, the rest I think is also cool, but that's my favorite part. The first laps or the first corners I did was really a big surprise because when I saw the size of the car, I thought it would be lazy and rolling and pitching a lot, but it's completely opposite. It feels more like a go-kart and uh, with the Quattro, it has so much traction. And also, while we were testing, we improved the drivability a lot, especially on the braking, where we have this artificial center diff that makes you feel like any quattro I've ever driven. Today, we unveil the Audi RS Q e, the latest and technologically most sophisticated vehicle Audi Sport has ever developed for racing. Audi has always pushed the boundaries to do things in motorsport that nobody else dared to do before. The Audi Quattro was a game changer for the World Rally Championship. Audi was the first brand to win Le Mans 24 hours with an electrified powertrain. Now, we want to begin a new era at the Dakar Rally. Our Audi RS Q e-tron was created from a blank sheet of paper in record time and it stands for Vorsprung durch Technik. Making things possible that many think are impossible. That's what progress means to me and our customers once again will benefit from what we'll be learning with this project. The future of mobility is electric. Audi was one of the first car manufacturers to compete in Formula E. For us, electromobility is no longer a vision of the future. It's the present, our daily life. For example, our first fully electric high-performance model, the Audi RS e-tron GT, has been available on the market since the beginning of the year. The Dakar Rally offers us the opportunity to break new grounds. It's about presenting and developing our technology under the most extreme conditions. The Audi RS Q e-tron will have to master different surfaces, bumps, jumps, water crossings, and a lot of sand and dunes. In addition, the event lasts almost two weeks. Up to 800 kilometers are covered every day, sometimes even more. And that is the ultimate test for the technology. Entrepreneurial courage has always paid off for Audi. And I'm convinced that this also will be the case at the Dakar Rally. I trust in our engineering skills and the ability to make things possible that many consider impossible. One of the key factors to enter cross-country rallying and the Dakar Rally is the freedom of the technical regulations. For example, unlike in Formula E, we can use our own battery technology. The battery technology and the energy management offer the greatest potential in e-mobility. The concept we've chosen for the Dakar Rally is very complex and the time to prepare for our first event in January 2022 is very challenging. I'm pleased with what our engineers and designers have produced in less than 12 months since the project was conceived. I would like to thank everybody involved in this very ambitious project. To me personally, the car looks stunning and I'm sure you will be pleased the same way. It's a fascinating vehicle, for sure. It's a very, very complex. I have to say it's probably one of the most complex cars I've seen in my life. It's a little bit like going to the moon, because I, could, I can consider that the people who designed the rocket to go to the moon didn't know what they have to expect, and it's the same for us, I think, today as well. You can be the fastest car, but you will be not able to win if you don't have reliability. You can have the best driver, without reliability he will be nowhere. So first you have to finish before you can finish first, and in this case first you have to finish finish. Forget all the rest. 
the rest will come as a nice present. We tried to make the car service friendly, but obviously with so many electric engines, wiring lumens, fuel tanks, battery, and all of this, there's a lot more in, a, in this car than on a standard car, and that is a big difference. If you have to change, then it's a lot of work, obviously. All the crew has to go through a special training, but then to do it out in the field, we have to train again and train again that they are able to do things. Yes, they can change sensors, but we made it a lot redundant to have not those problems. The rest we have to see. It will be completely different from before. Before you got out of the car, you were able to change some cables, a battery, something like this, even a servo motor. Here, it's all more complicated. First, you have to run the car down, make it safe, and then to start. So the safety procedure we have to train them is huge. If you want to prove something in motorsports, I think this is the racing you have to take. You have lots of kilometers every day. It's the most difficult terrain you do. If it can survive this, I think it can go everywhere. Imagine we are coming from round track racing. We, we pretty much know the racetracks, we know the surface, we know the racing format, we know the competitors. A lot of time is, is spent in the simulators trying to prepare as good as possible. The car, to me, for us being developers, it's, it's almost like, you know, a pirate's treasure. You open it up and you don't really know what to expect. Before we even thought about the car, um, we at Autosport Racing asked ourselves the question, how could the future powertrain look like? And uh, this is why we came up with, with what we call the energy converter concept, which is scalable and really adapts to every use case in racing. The car has an electronic drive unit on each axle. They are identical and they are not mechanically linked. There is let's say a mid-differential, which is simulated per software. The energy for the e-drives comes either from the high voltage battery or the energy converter. The energy for the battery comes from, you know, brake recuperation or the energy converter. And the energy converter itself consists of, of a four cylinder turbocharged engine, which we de developed for DTM. And that is directly linked to a generator. And that generator, by the way, is also a drive system from the Formula E. So actually there are three in the car. And all those components, very complex, are obviously you know, com controlled and linked with the vehicle control unit, the VCU we have in the car. The E-Drive were developed for Formula E. So they are state-of-the-art, highly efficient, system efficiency greater 97%. We did a, a few adaptions on the cooling side a few adaptions on how the system is integrated in the car, some changes on the internals, but only for robustness reasons. And yeah, of course the software, we always work on the software. Thinking about the car, the jumps, digging into the sand, hitting stuff, stones, holes, etc. I think all components will be stressed extremely. You have hot days, cool nights, you have high altitude. The energy management has to deal with all those situations which can be un, you know, foreseen. And I think that will be one of the biggest challenges in the whole project. When you look at the car, just by looking at it, you'll see Vorsprung durch Technik. The 
one of the biggest milestones for us is to show and prove that the electric driven car can win one of the toughest races and the longest races in motorsport, the Rally Dakar. To be honest, when I first heard about going into the desert, I said, wow, that's something completely new for us. With the design phase and the concept, we started around June, August 2020. We had to really start from scratch, except with our partner QMS, who had already a lot of success in the Dakar, but with the new project, it's something completely different. There was no real regulation existing for a new uh, fully electric driven concept car like, like we have. With ASO and also FIA had to define the regulations. Everything what you develop, you have to really think in your head, will this last, will this be possible? I mean, in the past we did our 24 hour car for Le Mans, which had to last for 24 hours, but now we have to have a car which basically has to last 14 days in the desert. All our departments are involved, from the aero development, the chassis, suspension, everyone, engine, the electric department, our MGU, battery development. So basically the whole uh, crew from whole Audi Sport, everybody is involved in the complete design process. Weight is always a topic, especially when you have the battery or with our concept you have the three MGUs in the car, two to drive the car and one for the generator to charge the battery at the end. And then we also have our combustion engine, but all these parts are developed for road racing and their weight is always a topic. So these are all parts which are already designed, let's say, to be on the minimum weight what we can achieve. We learn so much at the moment in this project and this is why we have to collect now a lot of data first to see if we develop in the, in the correct direction. We really have uh, some very experienced drivers in, in our lineup. They are also very important in the development phase. How you drive the car, how you have to feel in the car, especially now in the testing phase but already before. Then we do the next step and analyze the data in, in test to see where we can go quicker or where we can get faster with the car to, to do also some improvements in terms of performance. We are able to really have the latest and greatest parts, let's say from efficiency, from technology in the car and really can show what we are able to do. And at the end, when you see the car, just how it looks, it's, it's really amazing and uh, we are really looking forward to get the car into the desert finally and hopefully be successful and be on the top step at the end at one stage at the Reddit Dakar.